all the basics. All right, so um, if you're fat like me and you can't fit underneath this, these trucks, um, you need ramps. You can get these at uh, Northern Tool. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. Make sure that they're rated for at least uh, 6,000 pounds. Uh, when doing this job, you need also wheel chucks. First thing you want to do, roll the truck onto the wheel, up onto the, up onto the uh, ramps. Chuck the wheels, okay? Um, if the truck is rolling because the parking brake isn't engaging fully, uh, because the pad, the shoes are worn down, you're going to want to, um, uh, you know, have a friend put out your chocks for you while you have, hold the truck up on the ramps, because if you pull up on the ramps and you get out of the truck and the truck rolls, cause the parking brake doesn't work, you're in, you're going to have some problems. So yeah. Once you get it onto the ramps, um, you're going to put it in park or, um, once you get it on the ramps, you start the truck, put it in neutral. That way the parking brake is off. The light is over here. It shows that it is off and then shut off the truck with, with the truck in neutral. Okay. Truck in neutral. This pushed in. You don't want it on parking brake completely off when you shut off the truck with the parking brake uh with the truck in neutral it's going to give you that nasty little sound so what i do is i disconnect the battery i uh you know just come over here disconnect the ground it's 14 mil on most of these mm, then just kind of set it aside and uh, get to work okay so for this job we only need a few simple tools um, most of these uh, you know 96 through 2001 2002 freight liners are uh, you know they got a 5.9 Cummins and their majority of the stuff on them is uh, standard so just a standard set of sockets uh, impact sockets impact uh air impact three eighths 12 point wrench and uh a medium length pry bar uh we may not even need this sometimes we get lucky but um you can do this whole job pretty easily um this is the parking brake itself it's the parking brake you can see it comes with an assembly if you go to freightliner to purchase this i haven't been able to find it anywhere else other than freightliner if you go to freightliner to purchase this make sure you get the assembly which comes with this bracket and these springs because if you ask for just the shoes they'll sell you just the shoes and they're about the same price and this saves you a whole lot of trouble because these are some tough springs trust me um, pay the extra 20 bucks and they're about a I believe this is $122 um, I mean if you're absolutely in doubt my guy in San Antonio Texas at Doggett Freightliner his name is Cameron he's a badass uh, he's my parts guy he is amazing um, the part number for this is Put my head up to this thing so you can see it asl 02 blah 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 it's pretty much the same all the trucks that have a double neutral allison 500 series uh five speed automatic transmission that you know it's a double neutral so it's a neutral reverse drive or neutral reverse neutral drive two one i believe uh the top on your shifter will say um pb for parking brake and they have a uh, hydraulic parking brake on the drive shaft. Um, this pretty much applies to all those, um, you know, particularly the old FedEx Express trucks. So let's get started. So I'm gonna use the most basic of tools for you guys. Um, make sure before you try to take off a drive shaft, your wheels are chucked and uh, the truck is in neutral and there's no tension on the drive shaft you want to be able to move it because if you can't move it and there's tension on this thing and you start loosening up these bolts 
<laughs> it's a your recipe for disaster. Potentially, this thing could kill you. So, <sighs> little three eighths, motherfucker. Those are tight. <sighs> Whew. A little tiny little wrench you can't get him you know any leverage on I use basic tools because I'm gonna assume that you know if you're a mechanic you know what you need to do if you're not if you're just uh you know you just own one of these or it's a food truck or whatever I'm gonna assume you have more basic tools if you're you know if you're not into spending five hundred dollars a week on the uh, snap-on or Mack truck like some mechanics are I mean I certainly don't shit's way too expensive so we got the the front of the drive shaft towards the transmission side we got the clamps off we'll come back over here to the uh, carrier bearing and these two bolts on either side are 11 sixteenths. Yeah. What? Did it. Have a there? Yeah. Get out from underneath it. Okay, so that's free. Come back to the front. Hi, boy. Pop that some bitch out. Bring it down. Okay, just put it out of the way. Yeah. You watching on the phone? Yeah. Are you watching on my phone? Yeah, go over to my toolbox. My phone's over there. It should be showing what I'm seeing. So now that the drive shaft is just slightly off and out to the side. Grab a bigger socket. I think the other one was 11 sixteenths. This one is three quarters. And there's a bolt in there. Can you see? The, can you see the bolt? Yep. All right. So it's bigger than three quarters. It's uh, 13, 13 sixteenths. Bingo. Get our impact. I'm going to take the drum off. Okay, don't lose that washer. And here's the fun part. Bear in mind, sometimes, uh, Transmission fluid comes out of here. It's no, uh, no big deal. Just be careful when you're pulling it out and putting it back in. There is a seal. Sometimes you can fuck it up. And look at that. We got lucky. No fluid on this one. Just set that uh, drum off to the side. And these three bolts. I believe those are the three quarter. Yeah, those are the three quarter. So it's three. Three sizes. I'm gonna use three quarters. There we go. Grab our impact. Don't lose these washers. They are important. You can do this with a wrench, but uh, impact makes it a lot faster. Take this sucker off. Now sometimes this uh, seal that's in here goes bad, and um, that'll also cause your truck to roll. Um, and this pad material will get uh, all saturated with uh, transmission fluid and it, it won't grab the inside of the drum and it's just it, it just ruins these so we'll throw that aside
Then grab the new one. Now, up here at the top, we got this little fun piece. And this rides in the back of the parking brake up here. And it spreads the, it turns sideways and it spreads the, the shoes. You're gonna wanna put some grease on that. All right, we got our grease. You might be, um, you know, you might be tempted to use uh, bearing grease, don't. Use caliper grease, it's thicker and more water resistant. It goes up in this little hole up in here, just a little socket. I don't know if you can see it. it goes back in there. Careful, because the thing will fall on you and it's kind of heavy. So here's the fun part. So those little forks up there on that piece, you gotta get lined up with these little spaces right here on the back of this park and brake shoe assembly. It's right here it's where these two pieces go of the fork. So you gotta get that lined up first, right? And once you get that lined up, and you gotta twist it just a little bit in either direction to get these holes lined up for the bolts. So you'll know it's seated when this these two surfaces, you know, the inner piece and the surface of this mounting flange is, you know, flush with each other. And guys, if you're using an impact, don't just throw it in the socket and drive it in. Spin these things in first. You know, cross thread it. So you cross thread one of these things. This is the tail shaft of your transmission. You're fucked if you mess those up. Alright. Zip those back in. Okay, so again, let me grab your uh, parking brake drum. Looks like that on the inside, it's nothing fancy. It's got some splines in there to go on, on the tail shaft of the transmission. You just slide it on there, kind of feel it in place till you get it over the splines, push it back in. Grab your big ass bolt, put it back in the hole, give it finger, finger thread it a little bit until you feel it really grab and you can get some turns on it. Swap out your three quarters socket back for your 13 sixteenths. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but the sound changed with the impact. You just give it a couple of duggers. Nothing crazy. So when you're putting this uh, drive shaft back on, um, make sure that you're watching this carrier bearing. Because if you put the drive shaft back in this end, and you come back over here, and this is facing down, you're just going to have to take it apart again. Um, yeah, <laughs> so make sure that's facing up. So, again, our drive shaft. You can't spin the drive shaft. Oh, fuck, cat fell off. If a cat falls off, make sure you have all your uh, roller bearings in there, your needle bearings. Because if you lose one of those, you're going to end up having to re rebuild a drive shaft. <sighs> you just kind of wiggle it forward. You got this little tang right here. The, the caps have to go inside those little tangs. So you have to finagle this thing a little bit till it pops into place. Eh, nice and nice and even. Those of you who are wondering, these uh, little drive shaft bands are uh, Spicer two two one four, and that is a twelve point bolt. 12.38. If they're kind of boogered up, 
you know, Spicer 2214. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them at O'Reilly's uh, for a kit. It comes with two, two bands and four bolts. They're relatively inexpensive. I think I paid like eight bucks for it. Let's just thread these suckers back in. Go back over here, make sure your carrier bearing is down. Okay. With these, you want to make sure they're just good and good and hand tight. Uh, maybe uh, 50 pounds of pressure. Just, I mean, good and snug. Real good and snug. I mean, just by hand, never put an impact or anything on them. Just turn them until they stop spinning. So. Okay, now that we got the uh, front of the drive shaft back on, it's time to get the uh, carrier bearing put back in place. Notice these are lag bolts. They got a little square on them. I don't know if you can see that. This little square bit fits in this groove. You gotta make sure that that's like that. Get a washer and a bolt. I hold it up with uh, one arm, with my left arm, and reach over and put my finger on the back of that bolt. I mean, it helps if you got two people, but I do it so often that uh, <laughs> I'm used to not having to do two people. I can do it with one. So remember, these are little acorn nuts. Um, we're not acorn nuts. What, what the hell do they call them? Uh, stove nuts. So the they're kind of like a rounded portion on the outside, and it's uh, misshaped, kind of like a locking nut. They're called stove nuts. And uh, makes it easy if you do one side, put your finger on the other side of that bolt to hold it down. Put the impact on there. Give it a quick zap. And then we go to the other side. Put your finger on it, hold it down into the hole. Give it a couple of duggas. And that's really pretty much it, guys. Now that we get our drive shaft reconnected, carry bearings back in place, we get the new shoes in. Uh, we come over here, back to the adjustment for the parking brake. So this little wishbone thing, you want to, you know, spin it, you know, righty tighty, to where this gap closes. You know, you want to bring them back together because when the parking brake is set, this fun looking little thing moves up it's being pulled by this cable up here i don't know if you can see it but um it gets well i'll explain it later <laughs> um but you want to reset this back up a little bit until these uh the holes in this are even with the hole here you know in the resting position that way the parking brake is uh you know off you know it's off because the truck is still in neutral uh after we shut the truck off put it in neutral so we can you know make you know make all of our repair uh, so once that's all lined back up i'm gonna put our uh our pin back in our dowel dowel pin there you go. right there put a new brand new shiny cotter pin in its place Spread that sucker out, and we're good to go. Now all we gotta do is test the thing. All right, so back at the battery, after we shut off the truck, um, we left it at neutral, and the nasty little buzzer was going. I guess it decided to go off because it's not running anymore. Tighten uh, the ground on our battery back up. This is a 14 millimeter wrench. It may be different on yours, but on most of these, it's 14. Of 
Cool. So we get the drive shaft put back together, uh, you know, the drive shaft and the parking brake all put back together. New shoes on the, uh, the parking brake. It's still in neutral after we shut off the truck initially before we started the repair to make sure the drive shaft was loose so we could, you know, so we're safe, so it doesn't kill us. Uh, if we put it back in park, where it says PB, parking brake, uh, we should be able to hear the parking brake engage. And I don't know if you could hear that, but I could. So this right here, parking brake, and if your truck has this yellow pull thingy, <laughs> it says parking brake. This and putting it here do the exact same thing. There's no difference between them. They both engage the hydraulic parking brake on the back of the transmission on the drive shaft. Uh, which makes uh, our job a little bit easier for uh, you know testing the the new parking brake. See if maybe we need to adjust it out a little bit more. Something to remember while you're uh, doing this: this truck is still on the ramps in the front, still has chocks in the back. Uh, it's better to have a buddy, you know, pull out those chocks. Make sure this is in park. Have a buddy pull them the uh, wheel chocks just in case there's still tension, or uh, just in case we haven't adjusted the parking brake fully enough to stop the truck from rolling. So you start the truck, foot on the brake, have your friend pull the, uh, pull the chocks, and then put it in reverse and roll it off the ramps. So to test the parking brake to see how well it's uh, it's working, make sure it's in proper adjustment. Um, I'm going to start the truck, put it in drive, and then set the parking brake with this yellow handle. Right here, the parking brake light will shine, and that'll let us know that the parking brake is in fact on. And uh, we'll give it a little bit of gas while it's in drive, and if it doesn't move. We're good. We put it in reverse. If we give it a little gas and it doesn't move, we're good. Parker brake set. Pull the yellow handle. Parking brake light is on. Put, the, put it in drive. Give it a little gas. Truck's not moving. Reverse. Park. Truck's not moving. So put it back in drive. Now we're moving. Parking brake is off. That's all there is to it. All right, so um, I wanted to, I'd like to apologize for uh, some of those clips there. They were, uh, something happened with the settings on the GoPro and it turned sideways and a lot of things got cut out and I had no idea it was happening. Um, it wasn't until later that I watched a couple of the videos. I was like, shit. Uh, and then Javon showed back up and he uh, kind of helped guide me <laughs> in the right position. Anyway, so those, uh, I. I told you that the uh, uh, the drive shaft bands with the bolt kit it was like two two one four I think Spicer. It is a, a Spicer part, um, but uh, that's the part number. To, uh, just in case, <laughs> if you want to go looking for it, and then uh, that rear tail shaft seal, uh, if depending on what the cause was, if you pull off that, that drum and your shoes are nasty, like they're all you know, covered in oil and stuff, this is your, um, this is your tail shaft seal. Although it's a national oil seal, uh, 415988. Um, you can use a, you know, a long screwdriver stick it in there just kind of pry against the edge pop it out comes to putting in the new one um you know take the new seal get it in place uh take the old one stick it up against the new one make sure to put it in the same way and then uh, use a rubber mallet or something just kind of tap it in place until it's uh you know the uh so this edge of the seal is flush with the uh, the housing of the transmission, mm. it's really that easy, man. Uh, any questions? Just uh, you know, hit me up. Thanks.